This video is extremely important. In grade 12, we encounter a new type of graph, which is the cubic graph. And that typically looks something like this. To find x-intercepts, we know that you have to make y equal to 0, and then you would typically find three of them for a cubic graph. But the method of finding those three x-intercepts does confuse some students. So let's take a look and see how we can do it. So let's say we had the following expression and we need to find the three x-intercepts. Well, the way it works is the following. You're looking for numbers that you could plug into here and the y value would be zero, right? Because at your x-intercepts, we know that the y value is zero. So let's make the y value equal to zero. Now, the way that this technique works is you need to plug different x values into this equation until you get a value of zero. Now, the numbers that you want to choose will be one, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. One of those numbers, or, you, or what you do is you keep plugging in those x values into this equation and you keep going until you get a 0. So what I mean is the following. So what I like to do is I make a little template for myself like that on the calculator and then we can just plug in different values. So we could plug in a value of 1 for example and then we get an answer of 10. And that's not what we want, okay? We're looking for a number, we, we, we want to get an answer of zero. Oh, I just realized I, I've made a mistake. And sorry for any of you at home who picked that up. Over here, this was a minus, and then I went and made it a plus. So on the calculator, I've also got it as a plus, and that's why it's not working. So this should be a negative. There we go, and then I just need to fix the calculator. And then if we say equals, we get a zero. Okay, there we go. So I'd made a small little mistake. So... The x value of 1 makes the answer 0. So what you do, and you must remember this, is you then make a bracket that will then say x minus 1. Because remember, if x equals to 1 is one of the uh, factors, then you would say x minus 1 for your first bracket. And then we're going to have one big bracket left over. And then on the inside of this bracket, it will be some type of trinomial. So I'm just going to call it ax squared plus bx plus c. So if you had to multiply these two together again, you would obviously have to get the original expression. And that's going to help us to work out what A, B, and C would be. So if you had to multiply these two brackets together, where would you get x to the power of 3? Well, that would only happen in one place. That would be when you multiply this x and this ax squared. Okay? Now, we know that the original expression, the number in front of the x cube, is a 1. So we know that a would then have to be 1. So that when you multiply those two together, you still get x to the power of 3. If, for example, the number in front of this x cubed was a 2, then this a value would have to be a 2. But in this case, it's just going to be a 1. The next place to check is if you have to multiply this part, or no, let me first ask you, where would if you had to multiply these two brackets together, where would you get a constant? Remember, a constant is something that doesn't have an x in it. Well, that would only be if you multiply this minus 1 and this c. And together, that should give us positive 6. So all we're doing in this technique, guys, is we are looking at these two brackets and seeing what the a, b, and c sh would have to be so that we would get back to the original. So we know that minus 1 times by minus 6 would give us positive 6. So C is going to be minus 6. Now to find B, it's a little more complicated. What you need to do is choose whether you would like to look at the x squares or if you would like to look at the x's. It's your choice. You will get the same answer. So I'm just going to choose the x squares. So we know that the x squares should equal minus 2. So where would you get an x squared if you had to multiply these two brackets together? It's going to happen twice. So it's going to be when you multiply this one and that one. That's going to give you an x squared. And then it's also going to happen when you multiply this one and this one. So we can set up a little equation. We want the answer to be equal to minus 2x squared. That's what we can see there. And so that's going to be the combination of this one times by that one, which is b x squared and then this one times by that one which is going to be minus 1 x squared you can then ignore the x squares 
And so we end up with minus 2 is equal to b minus 1. And so b is going to be equal to minus 1. There we go. So now, to find the other two x-intercepts, we could factorize this. If you can't factorize that, then use the quadratic formula. Absolutely fine. But in this case, it does factorize quite nicely. And so, if you had to factorize that, you would get x minus 3 and x plus 2. So our three answers are going to be x equals to 1, or x equals to 3, or x equals to minus 2. And those will be the places where the x-intercepts would be on the graph. So it would be at minus 2, 1, and 3. So you'd get something like that, perhaps. It could look something different. It could look a little bit different. But that's the idea, okay? And please remember that you are allowed to use the quadratic formula. You don't have to form these three brackets. That's not what the question's asking you for. The question is wanting you to find the three x-intercepts. Now, Kevin, why do we need to do this? Good question. In calculus, it's very important that you know how to find x-intercept because many times they're going to ask you to draw the graph. And so you can't draw a graph without the x-intercepts.